Hello, we are back for one of your and my favorite videos, a q and I asked on Instagram for some questions and today we're gonna answer them. So I have a few, some that are gonna be really interesting to check out. Um, not that any of the questions are not great, but just, you know, in general. Um, so I'm gonna make some coffee, some iced coffee, cause it is hot, hot, hot. And then we can get started. Here's today's outfit. I just got this dress last night in the mail. I really like it. I think it is so stinking cute. It is a tank top, so I did have to wear it with a sweater, which I don't love. But actually, today I was okay, even though it is quite, quite hot. And I'm wearing the only shoes that I ever wear. And then I have this little, like, lemony scarf situation. So I will link whatever I can link from this outfit um, in the description down below on my like to know it. And we'll make some coffee. We'll find where Nyla just threw her ball because she's now whining because it's stuck underneath something. And I'll see you in a second. All right, so we have some questions here and we have some coffee here and we may or may not have dogs running around. Let's not, let's not joke. We will have dogs running around. So let's hop into it. So first question from Mastery in Middle says, what months do you typically see your highest earnings of the year? So for me, 1000%, August is always the highest by significant, um, by quite a bit. Um, last year, it was higher by like thousands with an S. And that was the same the year before. It's been like that. In general, I would say behind that, that September and October tend to be my next highest months. Um, so in general, just the fall tends to do better for me than any other time of the year, but that's gonna depend a lot on what kind of products you have and what you have available and different things like that. It used to be February for years and years. February was like really, really, really high. And the last like two years, it just has not been. And I'm not really sure why it's been kind of a weird, weird thing going on. Um, but yeah, so for me, it's always August is the highest September and October are lower than that, but still pretty high. So I always feel like the fall is pretty good. Um, Bonita Bequita 519 said, what prog program or font do you use to make rhythm cards and sheets? Um, so I use a font called Notable that I got off of TPT that I purchased. Um, and that's what I use for my rhythm cards. And I still use Keynote for all of my creation purposes. And that's my favorite and that's what I use. So that's what we have. Um, Don Lewis, um, I feel like that is Don Louis maybe Daniel says why not sell products directly through your blog so you can totally sell products on your blog however there's two main reasons that TBT is great or Etsy or any platform like that that does like the selling for, I guess three that does the selling for you number one is traffic people go to TBT to look for things so if they do not know who you are especially if you're smaller and you don't have a lot of traffic on your own you gotta have a way to get people to your blog to sell things. And so if you don't have an audience, if your audience is really small, if you don't have a lot of pull over them, then it's gonna be really hard to get anything sold. Versus, again, people go to TBT because they're looking for something. So they're like, I need, you know, a math test. I'm gonna go to TBT and look for a math test. So TBT has that inherent traffic built in and that's like one of the best, best, best things about them. So that's number one. Number two is when you are selling on your own website, you are then responsible for all of like the customer service things and all of the like website hosting and having the products, making sure they're delivered correctly. I'm thinking about all of the customer service -y questions that I already get to my email from people from TBT or from like purchasing my courses and stuff, which are also hosted on like a third party. Um, and I cannot even imagine how many technical customer service questions you would get if it was you yourself doing it. And especially if you don't have like a team, it's just you. That can be a lot like the technical end and, oh, I didn't get that or, oh, I didn't get it downloaded or I can't find it or, you know, whatever. So that's number two is TBT handles all like the technical stuff. And that's really great. Number three is something that's more relevant right now is sales tax. 
every single state has a different sales tax law. I mean, some of them, you know, overlap, but pretty much everybody has a completely different sales tax law, which means that if you're selling on your own website, you are then responsible for sending sales tax to all of the appropriate people at the appropriate time. In some states, it's if you sell anything in their state. Some states, it's only if you and that person are both in the same state. Some states, it's like once you hit this much in sales, then you pay sales tax and it's just bonkers. Now, I do believe there are like online like systems and solutions for that. So if that's something you're interested in, don't use that as the excuse to be like, oh, well, I can't do it because you can. But those are three reasons why I personally don't sell on my own blog. It is something that I have thought about many times and I like the idea of it. There's a lot of pros as well. But I think for me, at least right now with it being, you know, the team of Becca and I do have a video editor, but like, you know, that's it. And so I don't, I don't feel like I have the resources to to do that like and mentally I can't quite take it on so that is my personal opinion but you're welcome to do it just you know keep those things in mind it's just going to be different than what you already have going on um Saint Timmy said what's your favorite music game you like to teach and play with your kids um I don't know if you meant for that to be in this video but I can tell you Ooh. I don't even know if I have a favorite. There's so many good ones. Um, Grizzly Bear might be my favorite ones for the little kids. It goes, Grizzly Bear, oh, Grizzly Bear is sleeping in a cave. Grizzly Bear, oh, Grizzly Bear is sleeping in a cave. Please be very quiet, very, very quiet. If you wake him, if you shake him, he'll get very mad. And the Grizzly Bear is in the middle of the circle while all of us are hiking around the forest. And then at the end, you have to freeze and the Grizzly Bear wakes up. And if he sees you moving, then you're out. And it is great. I've played that. I've played it up to third grade, but I usually do it with the younger kids. Um, so that's probably my favorite. We'll go with that one. <sighs> This one says Orion, Ori, Entation says, did you notice a sales dip in the last few months? Do you think it could be AI or chat GPT? This is, I think the juiciest question we have. Have I noticed a sales dip in the last few months? No. Have I noticed a sales dip in the last few years? Yes. Um, all sales across all online retours, retailers pretty much, and definitely across TBT have been down year over year the last couple of years. So we had like COVID in like 2021, they were like bonkers and then hit 2022, 2023, we've had lots of inflation. We've had lots of, especially in education, we were getting a lot of money poured into education and now that a lot of that money's drying up, um, there's just, there's been a lot of stuff that has led to like massively like large scale problems. So there's that. Um, and, but I can't say that there's been a dip in sales recently. That being said, June and July is always going to be low. It just, it just is. Unless you sell a lot, a lot of classroom decor. I know some people do like I have some classroom decor, but it doesn't sell enough to like offset everything else. Um, but some people I know do really well with classroom decor, which is great. Good for them. Um, but for the most part, you're probably not going to get a lot of sales in June and July. So if you mean a dip like that, then yes, that was a dip. But other than that, I haven't noticed anything as far as like the months go. I'm going to look year over year. Let's see. Yeah, I made $100 more this July than last July. And I made 200 more this June since last June. And I made like a thousand more in May than last May. 300 more April. Um, March was really weirdly low for me, like 200, like $2,000 low for me. I don't know why. But every other month this year has been higher than the same month last year, which is so good <laughs> because it has been, it's been like years of just really not exciting sales on my end, which is in part the global issues, in part, um, for me, I think a lot of it was in the first few years, especially if you're going really hard, you see a lot of growth. So I was like doubling every single year. And then at some point that's gonna level out. So that helps. And I'm sure I did something that didn't help, but, or I could have done better or something, but I don't know. Anyway, um, growth education there. Oh, sorry. The second question. Do you think it could be AI and chat GPT? 
yes and no. We're going to have a video about this, but yes, teachers are using chat GPT. First off. Second, is every teacher using chat GPT? Heck no. I didn't touch this thing until like a month ago. And even a month ago, I haven't used it for teaching at all. And I am a pretty techie person. I mean, I don't identify as a techie person, but like I have a YouTube channel. I, you know, I'm in Google. Like I know a lot about tech. So I cannot even imagine the teachers that I work with that, you know, can barely work their smart boards. Like they're not buying, they're not using chat GBT. So some people, yes, are, but not enough people that I think it's going to like drastically reduce your sales. Now, long term, I do think that that is going to become an issue. But in the short term, I don't think it's going to be like massively different. Long term, again, we're going to have a video about this, but long term, um, I do think that a lot of especially like smaller products and more simple products like worksheets, writing prompts, like those kind of things that are maybe not quite as full of effort are going to be replaced by ChatGPT almost entirely, maybe not entirely, but a lot long term. Um, so what I'm doing and what you're probably going to want to do is to really get ahead of the game of more really deep critical thinking, lots of options, like the things that are teacher based that can be replaced. So just really thinking about like how we can make the best resources for teachers is going to make a big difference. But those really cheap, you know, here's a whole bunch of math problems they're eventually gonna get phased out. So not tomorrow. Every time I say things, people like take it really crazy. I'm not saying tomorrow, I'm just saying. In, in the future, I can see that being the trend. So no, I don't think it's ChatGPT. It could just be summer. It could just be, what are your products were you selling? Like what products were selling? What products are selling now? What, were you marketing something that you're not doing anymore? There's a lot of things that can go into that. And the best thing I can tell you is go look at your data, look at your traffic, look at what products we're selling, and then kind of compare that to now and see where you can see a trend. Um, Growth Education Therapy says, how long does it take you to write a blog post? That completely depends on how long the blog posts are. I write a lot of blog posts and I write a lot in general, so I'm pretty quick about it. And especially for music teaching, I most of my blog posts are like lessons that I have done before. And since I teach music, I teach the same lessons at least six times because I teach it to every single class. And sometimes I teach it to multiple grade levels. Sometimes I teach it multiple years. So I might, you know, I know my lessons like really well by the time that I'm making a blog post about them. So it doesn't take me a super long time. I would say I probably average one every 30 minutes. Sometimes I can whip them out in 15 if it's something short or something I know really well sometimes it takes like an hour if there's a lot of things I have to think about and a lot of things I have to add in and stuff like that for the actual typing part and then in addition to that it's at least and then in addition to that it would be another at least 15 to 30 minutes to get it actually ready to post with like getting graphics in and formatting and adding links and all of that kind of stuff All right, and last question for today. How long have we been talking? 12 minutes. Oh, that's good. That's a good amount. Um, last question for today is going to be from Thrifty Tashi, and she, this is not related. Some of y'all asked some, some of y'all asked some random questions, and some of y'all asked questions on the wrong accounts, and it's, I'm not answering them here, but I'll answer them in other videos. Um, so Thrifty Tashi said, what's your favorite thing to do in Savannah? Um, well, let's see. A lot of my favorite things are not touristy things because I live here. So I would say my favorite things, I do love to go to the beach. We don't have the nicest beach, but it is, you know, it's a beach and it's fun. Um, do love going kayaking. Kayaking is really fun. I also love taking, I was going to say hikes, but if you're from the mountains, you're thinking of something different. Hiking, really just walking um, through some of our state parks. We have some really beautiful state parks right on the water. Love anything that's on a marsh. I just love all the colors and things like that. So those kind of things are really great. Um, we have a bunch of state parks that are all like right on the water that are really pretty. And then we love going to shows. So we'll go to the Savannah Philharmonic and watch, you know, orchestra shows. There is the Savannah Theater. We saw a musical there a few months ago. We saw a musical on Hilton Head this weekend. 
um, the there's these like candlelight quartet concerts we've been going to. The Hilton Head has a Philharmonic. I'm pointing because it's that way. Um, but and Hilton Head's like an hour away ish from where we are. So we really enjoy doing things like that. Um, and if you're looking for a food suggestion, my two top favorites, I would say, um, that you can find in the tourist section and not in the tourist section. Number one is B and D burgers. That's my parents' absolute favorite restaurant. <laughs> it's very Savannah. All the burgers are named after different Savannah landmarks. It's really fun. And then, um, secondly, it would be Spanky's. Spanky's is, um, like a, like a bar and grill kind of situation. They have the best chicken fingers though. So highly recommend their chicken fingers if you end up at Spanky's. So those would be my two top picks as far as food goes. And yeah, so hopefully I answered some questions for you. And if you want to make sure your question gets included in the next one, make sure you're following over on Instagram. It's at becca.e.davis and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.